to Linus. Who, who you tell us about the two songs that you... I just yawned, you know. <laughs> I didn't know you started. Yeah. Are you can practice? So, um, who you tell us about the two songs that um, are in the film? Um, I Live a I and uh, Yes Jazz. Alright. I Live a I Live a It's about a track. Um, basically, I live around, I live around, I live around I to the place where there's light and no darkness. So basically, I'm asking the Almighty I, you know, to um, help I day to day with pure purity, you know, so I can reside. And I'm the next to the Mighty I, and Zion I. So basically, when I wrote this track, I wrote this track. At the end of the first year gone, so I said last year, I say first year. Um, and it took us to car about 45 minutes to write it. And the inspiration, I remember that day, you know, um, I was watching a DVD about the new world order, and you know, I was saying, yeah, that's the fire I rescue, I, you know. So I just prayed for pure purity, and the meditation came in up. My, my mentor, you know, so Father blessed I with words, sound and power to bring that tune forward to go to the studio and I remember the day I recorded that track and I sat in the booth, I stood in the booth and I closed our eyes and I just pretended there was a, 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 a um, procession of saints walking down the road and you know we were lined up and I was there walking down, they were pulling people left, right and centre, you know, who made it to Zion. And they were actually coming up to I and I just sang for my life, I live a ride, you know what I mean? So that song is precious to I and, you know, when I sing it on stage, you know, it touches a lot of people. And a lot of people I know, they know the lyrics, you know, I can sing that song and people can sing it along with I. So that song carries power. Mm, so give thanks. And yes, Ja. Yes, Ja. I will. I'll do your works. I'll speak highly of you. You know, I'll teach whatever that I has taught I. I will teach. I will pass on. So basically, I'm saying, yes, Ja. I'll do your works. You know, everything you taught I, I will deliver to whoever I know and uplift with my music. So that's important, the spiritualness in my music, you know, and that's why when Esther found I on Facebook, you know, and she approached I and she told I about the project and straight away I was, you know, I was happy and excited to be part of it because growing up, who didn't hear of Bob Marley, you know, and um, I remember the first CD I had of him was the legend, Bob Marley, the legend, you know, um, and all these songs I knew off by heart and I sang out, I sang out. So I know with Bob Marley's music there's a lot of spiritualness and that's what captivated I as a young lioness growing up, you know. Even though, yeah, I've got the fire side. <laughs> I've always had my fire. At the same time, you know, I've got to make sure I'm grounded, you know, keep myself grounded because the groundation, the spiritualness will control the lioness. You know, with that, that I'll just be an uncontrollable lioness, and that that, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> yeah, so the spiritualness help I, you know, and to go through, you know, and know when to roar, know when to be humble, you know. But at the same time, it's Jah work, it's Almighty's work, and every day I pray for pure purity, you know, keep my temple clean, so Father give me the inspiration. And a meditation for the word sound and power to put down on paper, you know, to go to the studio to record, to get my backing track done, and to go out to the stage, you know, and to I live on those songs, you know, that he's told me to. Yeah, that's the greatest. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've got some songs on Reverb Nation, so I told Esther to go on, on there to see my songs, and, and she really loved, you know, I think I've got 10 tracks up there. So yes, John, I live a the two tracks you picked out, you know, 
which are strong tracks for I too. You know, it draws the powers, draws the spirits, you know. Seven spirits around it. I was talking about my angel. You know, it's important. The spiritual side of I is important for the lioness. Without that. And uh, you went to Africa to record a video of that song. Yes. Can you yes. tell us about it? Yeah, I recorded the video for I Live Arrive <clears throat> at Cape Coast. I went to the Slave Castle. I went into the dungeons, you know, and that's another side of thing which uplifted the song. Is where the where, where the video was, was was filmed, you know, it was a big connection to my ancestors, you know, my brothers, my sisters, you know, and um, I felt the pain, you know, because I'm spiritual. I picked up, I picked up the presence, I picked up the pain, you know, I saw where they kept, I felt the suffering, you know, so at the same time, and I actually filmed on the rocks surrounding the castle where the boat came up to take I, you know, to the lava regions and, and where they chained the boat, there's still a big, big root there where they chained the boat to, and I put my foot on it and I sang I live a ride. You know, and I said, yeah, I'm surrounded, I have my audience. I can't see them, but I have my audience in the sea, you know, there's souls in the sea. I sang to them, you know, I sang for the souls in the hills, in the valleys, you know. I don't, I don't forget. And this trug to Cape Coast was actually another level for the lioness, you know. I took, I took my, I took, say my game, I took my, my mission to another level. You know, spiritual fire level, because for what I saw, you know, I've heard, I've read books. You know, more time the books don't tell you everything, you know, because certain people control what we hear, what we see, and what we need to learn. When I forward to the castle myself, and I saw where, you know, my people was kept for what, you know, and to I, that's where. That's where the spiritual fire comes from, you know, from my ancestors picking up on what, you know, they had to endure, you know, and um, being at the castle, you know, I went into the governor's quarters, you know, I went upstairs, you know what I mean, big, 16 big windows surrounding the place, and right underneath them is the dungeons where the slaves are kept. You know, so while he's upstairs, tuck out in big four poster bed, you know, there was all 60 men locked up in one room fighting for air, you know, and every rising, you know, you'd find bodies on the floor, you know, and that, that's where he slept. He slept above that, you know. I walked around, I walked around, I went into the female dungeons, I went into the, you know, the male dungeons, I went to the dungeons for the runaway slave, you know. That's where the fire comes from. And I went to the dungeons. I went to one dungeon. There's a male dungeon. And I sat on the floor. And there was like, you know, they must use their shackles to engrave symbols and their names in it. And I sat down with my little knees. I ran my fingers through the names and the symbols. And, you know, for a good 15 minutes. And I hold a vibe. And before that, there was about 10 people in this one room with the guide and talking about it. And I wasn't even listening to him, paying attention, because I was more interested in feeling the atmosphere, you know, and, you know, where I could see the bricks, because it's just one, one wall, 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 everywhere you look, you know, and one little crack in the door, which light came through. And I was observing every brick that I saw. Every brick I saw, I observed it. You know, and where you could see light on the floor, you could see the symbols. And I sat down. Everyone walked out because they were holding their chest. They couldn't, you know, take the vibration. You know, and I stood firm with my little knees. So I said, Yeah, we're the last ones, you know. So I said, Yeah, let's hold it for our family. And we sat on the ground and we run our fingers for the symbols and we held our vibe. And I felt them, I felt the presence. And I felt the presence strong, 
I wasn't frightened. I wasn't frightened, you know. So I stood my groundation and I spoke to the warriors of ancient times. <laughs> That's where I get my, my strength from, you know, the battlefield warrior strength, you know, from the ancestors. And that is in the lines as well. Like, you know, you've, you've got the word warrior, don't you, in one of your songs? Most of my songs. <laughs> Most of my songs have warriors, warriorses, lions, lionesses. You know, I also talk about the prophets, the priests, the kings, the queens. You know, we have to remember, you know, Abyssinian children, you know, Rasta children. Everyone has a mission, you know. You know, we can't have a prophet and a priest and a king. We have to know what our mission is here, you know. At the end of the day, I'm spiritual, you know. I'm a lioness on the battlefield, you know, fighting for truths and rights, you know, and to uplift, up, uplift the nation, you know, and to set a vibration for the ancestors, you know, and show them, you know, that there are warriors after them, to hold it for them, you know. So as soon as the fire I set it, as the mission. I know my mission. <laughs> I know my mission, you know. My mission for us to follow. Well, thank you very much. And we will continue this um, a bit later. Okay. All right. Thank you, ladies.